I went from this to this in nine months. Stick around to find out how. Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, <clears throat> all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Today, we're going to talk just a little bit our, about arthritis and what some of our naysayers have been saying in the comments about it. And <clears throat> I'm going to give you why I think they're wrong. But first, to the new people, let me say welcome. I'm glad you're here. Just before I stepped out the door at 10 o'clock this morning in this light rain to get the first of my steps in, I saw that I was one subscriber short of 4,000. So, if somebody watching this isn't subscribed and you'd like to help a guy out and push me over the top, that'd be all right. I would thank you for it. It's free and it does help the channel out. But for, uh, for those of you that are new, you may be asking yourself, Bob, what in the world are we watching here? Well, you're watching me walk. I do try to come up with some interesting things to talk about from time to time, but really you're just watching me walk because 10 months ago I couldn't do this. I could barely stand for two to two and a half minutes at a time. And now I'm out here walking every day. This month, I'm trying to push myself to 15,000 steps every day for the month of March. I came in a little short yesterday because it was cold and rainy. And there's been so much going on here at the church this week. I mean, it's been crazy. You know, we had the start of the revival on Sunday, and then <clears throat> revival on Monday, the last revival service was on Tuesday, so of course there was a lot of activity going on out here the entire time, and then Wednesday was the one day off. Uh, it's been Thursday was cold and rainy today is cold and rainy it's only I think the thermometer said 46 when I stepped out to start walking this morning that's just too cold but uh, yeah I'm kind of jumping around this morning Sorry about that. But yeah, the, uh, and Thursday last night, because this is Friday, you guys will see this on Saturday, but this is actually Friday. Um, last night was the Senior Saints, which is the 55 and older group, had their get together. They always have a meal of which I couldn't eat any of. But I had six boiled eggs before I went. I was going to cook some more after, but once again I got tired, and uh, ended up going to sleep pretty early. So I didn't cook anything else. So that's two days this week I've had six boiled eggs as the total food. And I feel it, I'm starting to drag just a little bit, I need to have myself a nice big meal today, but that's going to have to wait till later because there's a a birthday party for one of the young ladies of the church. Because, you know, pastor's child only turns 18 once. And there'll be finger foods and cake and ice cream, of course, none of which I can eat. But I'll go over and wish, wish her a happy birthday and socialize a bit because that's one of the things I like to do is socialize. But anyway, back to the 
the new people once you're watching here. Sorry about that little sidetrack there. Um, the main purpose of my channel <clears throat> is to show you that it's never too late to change your life. As long as you woke up this morning, you have a chance to do something today that will make tomorrow better. It may only be a little bit better, but remember, my whole channel is based around 1%. Get 1% better every day, and you'll see massive changes in just a month. And look at the difference 10 months will make. The reason I'm still saying nine months in my intro is that picture's old. I need to take a new picture for the 10 month mark. But it's been so cold and rainy the last few days that I just haven't done that because, well, let's face it, this coat that is about five sizes too big for me won't really show off my weight loss. Not that that's the only thing I'm interested in, but it makes sense for me to wear the smallest clothes I have that fit. You're never going to see me without a shirt on. It's just not going to happen. James at Ready Set Keto, a lot of respect to you, man. That takes guts I don't have. He put out a loose skin video this week. <clears throat> it's worth watching. For those of you returning, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Don't forget to help spread the word of the channel. You can hit that subscribe button, which I already talked about. That's free. Hitting the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Any interaction with the channel helps. And you can jump down in the comments and leave me a comment. Just say, hi, Bob. Or, wow, you look old and ugly today, Bob. Any kind of comment actually helps the channel out. But let's get into this arthritis thing. Since I've, I started recording about here, I've done a whole lap now and have not even started talking about what I wanted to talk about today. And that's arthritis. What's the number one thing you hear from somebody when you say, man, my arthritis feels so much better? They're like, well, of course your arthritis feels better because you took all that weight off your joints. And this seems like a fairly logical thing, you know, if you follow it through obviously the reason your knees hurt is because you had all that extra weight pushing down on them and it makes a lot of sense but then I got to thinking about it and it was actually one of the first things I noticed that was feeling better arthritis wise those of you that have watched all my videos will recall that this was about the best fist I could make when I first started this. I couldn't even hold the camera. I had to, those first, you know, back before September when I started walking with this selfie stick, I had to do sit down videos because I couldn't hold it. But now, my hands work just fine. Now, I, I've always said my arthritis is about 95% better because there is still just a little bit of stiffness there, but it's nothing like it was. But my whole thought on this, unless I was, you know, sleepwalking as a clown in a circus walking around on my hands all night and then climbing back into bed 
and then waking up. I don't remember doing anything like walking on my hands that would put load or weight on my on my hand joints, my fingers and my wrists. So if the arthritis pain relief is just from getting all that weight off your joints, how in the world do my hands feel better? There's something for you to think about today. It's the inappropriate inflammation. I'm not saying that it causes all of your arthritis pain, and there are certain types of arthritis that I'm sorry you have that type that won't see a lot of results from this. But I think everybody will see some. But the, uh, it's inflammation, inappropriate inflammation, causing the pain. I firmly believe that. Now again, there's no science behind this that I can explain. If you want to know the actual science, I suggest you watch Dr. Barry, Dr. Chafee, Dr. Fung, Professor K. They all do a really good job of talking about the science. Nutrition with Judy, Nurse Cindy, Kelly Hogan. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. People that do science and sciencey type stuff. You can go ahead and listen to them for those explanations. Oh, the rain's really starting to pick up. I may have to stop recording and do the rest of this sitting down inside. Not that I mind getting wet, but I don't want my camera to get wet while my phone. Because that waterproof case I bought for it didn't fit right. So, I'm back to the other one. So you gotta be careful. Not to damage my phone. It's supposed to be water resistant, but when you're an old guy on a fixed income, you can't really take a lot of chances with your stuff. <sighs> but yeah, I'll have some more thoughts when I get inside. Right now I'm going to shut the phone off, put it away protected from this rain try and get some more laps in because regardless of the rain I want to make sure I get to my 15,000 steps today because I came in a little short yesterday then I'll tell you about a little cheat I had last night just a tiny tiny little one and I felt it I'll explain that in just a minute with the magic of editing it'll be like I was never gone Hello everyone, and just like that I'm back. As you can see, I'm inside the trailer. It's a little bit later than when I quit walking because the rain really came down for a while and it's really loud on this trailer when it's raining hard. I'm gonna get back out and get some more laps in here in just a moment. I wanna get this, this video finished up so that I can start the upload before I go finish my walking because I still have 13 or 14 laps to get in. So that'll take me, it should take me about an hour and a half or so to get that many laps in. Hopefully the rain will quit here pretty soon and I can get that done. Um, <clears throat> but this is that's why I don't normally like to record in here um, because you can see how cramped it is. The lighting's not great because um, I can't get my main light far enough away from me. As you can see, if I put my glasses on, all you get is a glare off the light. Which is why when I do my live streams and record in here, I don't wear my glasses. And uh, this time of day, it's not even quite 11 o'clock yet. But this time of day, there's a lot of activity in the church. So recording inside the teen center in the kitchen there is 
is not really an option right now. So here we are. Um, but I think I'd covered everything I wanted to cover on the uh, arthritis issue. I mean, if it was really just the fact that we've gotten weight off of our joints, making our joints feel better, then how do you explain my hands? See, when I'm not walking and carrying the camera, I can show you this with both of my hands. How does that happen? I don't walk around on my hands all day. They're not load-bearing joints. So just something to think about. But um, the other thing I wanted to quickly talk about, I've talked about this a lot before, but we're going to go over it again because there's so much noise out there on the Internet. Oh, you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. Um, the thing that sparked my interest in talking about this again is I got a, a comment and I'm not trying to single anybody out because I do not mention names, um, but somebody said, I just started Carnivore and I've been using Tabasco. Is, am I doing it wrong? Well, there is no wrong and right when you're doing your proper human diet. Is Tabasco carnivore? No. However, if it's not causing you any problems and you like it, because I've used Tabasco, not recently, but when I've got a bottle of it sitting on the back of my stove at home, I, I like Tabasco. And if you look at Tabasco, and the other thing that I buy a lot of is Frank's Red Hot Sauce, there's really nothing there but pep basically red pepper and vinegar is all they are. Um... So as long as you're, they're not causing you any problems. And vinegar, I don't know of very many people that vinegar causes them problems. Um, some people have problems with red pepper because it, it is, I believe it's a nightshade. Um, but if you like the taste of it and you're getting the results you want, there's no reason not to use it. If at some point you stop getting results then perhaps that might be something you try cutting out to see if that is the thing that's causing you problems um, but there's so much noise out there on the internet you know eat fruit eat honey eat this fiber there's so many different people that are calling themselves meat based talking about their meat-based diet. Meat-based is not carnivore. Um, but again, if it's working for you, there's no reason to change. You know, I've mentioned somebody several times, not by name, but we all know who I'm talking about. The And again, I would love to meet him in person. He seems like a really nice guy and he believes in what he's saying, but... If you're not fit enough to to do, you know, three hours of surfing a day or you're a long-distance runner or whatever it is you're doing, you're probably not going to get away with eating two or three or four hundred grams of carbs via fruit and honey every day. It's just not going to happen. Um, you know, I've... All of these diets, you know, protein-sparing modified fasting... Um, egg diets or egg fasts the, the list just goes on and on and on and on about different ways of doing this and again if you find one that works for you then by all means continue to do it I'm not against any of that I'm not dogmatic I have always said on this channel if what you're doing is working there's no reason to change that being said my philosophy on how to at least start this diet for the first, you know, month or two or three, just so that you make sure you know all of the bad stuff is out of your diet. And then as you add things back in, you'll know what causes you problems and what doesn't. Um, quick side note, because I did, I told you about my little cheat last night. It wasn't a huge cheat. Um, we were cleaning up, getting done with the, the Senior Saints thing, and they had had brownies and ice cream for dessert, and Pastor's wife made the brownies from scratch. She made all the food, 
and it all smelled really good. I managed to resist it all, but as I'm walking by the table where the desserts were, I did not even pick up a brownie. You know how there's always like the little crumbs and stuff in the bottom of the pan when you make a pan of it? I scooped up like two fingertips full of the of the, the crumbles in the bottom of the pan. And I stuck them in my mouth just to see how they tasted. And they tasted wonderful. I love chocolate. Chocolate is so good. And brownie is so good. I was planning on eating more food last night after the dinner. I was Because I'd had six boiled eggs before I went over to keep me from doing what I did. And I did really well. I didn't eat any of the food because it was... Um, a chicken and pasta based dish and green beans and rolls and corn um i don't know if the screen just got darker or not there for a second my computer screensaver kicked on and i get that backlight from the computer screen but uh I ended up not eating more food last night because just those two fingerfuls of brownie really made my stomach hurt. I could feel it right away. It's like, oh, that was so dumb. It was so good. So worth it, but so dumb. Um, here comes some more rain again. Hopefully it doesn't get louder. But that's, you know... I'm ashamed of myself, but it was it was... It was really tasty, but, you know, that's just more confirmation of how bad that stuff is for me. That my body would react that quickly to to getting just a couple of fingerfuls of, of brownie. Which, I, like I said, it was really, really good, but so bad for me. And my glucose did fine. I was curious when I noticed my stomach hurting. I'm like, well, what's my sugar level? Did I just kill myself? And... My insulin reaction was fine. My blood glucose was 96, which is a little higher than it normally runs, but it was still in, in on the high side of good, but good. And then when I checked it later, it was back down to 82. So it didn't stay up very long on those two fingerfuls of sugar, but now I know better. But anyway, the, the Bob method of elimination diet that seems to be working for a lot of people. And again, you don't have to do this. If what you're doing is working, continue to do what you're doing. But for me, eat the meat, add the salt, drink the water. That's all you need to get 90% of where you need to be. Um, then that final 10% you might have to play with, oh, I think I need a little more fat in my diet. Um... I'm not building muscle the way I thought I would. Maybe I need to up my protein a little bit. And I heard an interesting discussion. You know, there's all this, you know, talk back and forth on the uh, on different channels about um, prioritizing protein or prioritizing fat, or some people calling it high fat carnivore and some people calling it high protein carnivore. But if you dig into the actual, I think it was a Kelly Hogan interview with somebody. I'm pretty sure it was. But if you dig into what they're eating, I think it was Kelly, it was Kelly Hogan and Bronson Dant. I'm sure of it. But, well, 90% sure of it. But, you know, they were both talking about how, you know, Coach Bronson says, you know, he prioritizes the protein. And Kelly, Miss Hogan, prioritizes the fat. But when they got to talking a little deeper, they realized that they were eating almost exactly the same thing. So it's more of a mindset than anything else. So what they came up with, and what I'm going to say is, how about we start saying we base our diets on adequate protein and adequate fat. And where that number falls for you, I can't tell you. There's, there's nothing I can do to, to reach through the computer screen and tell you what's best for you. You just have to play with that yourself. But again, that's I believe that's a 10% problem because they're both really healthy. And now, you know, she's doing CrossFit and he's working out to bulk up even more. And I mean, he already looks like a Greek statue, but that's um, 
you know, that's that's where they're at in their journey. They're beyond, they're within their five to ten percent, if not closer. You know, they're they're working on one percent problems at this point. Um, but eat the meat, add the salt, drink the water will get you to 90% of where you need to be. And then from there, you can play around with all the noise that's out there on the internet about adding this and adding that and trying this and trying the other thing. But until you get into that 10%, now you can try other stuff if you want to, but if you're confused, if you're having trouble, any of those things, just eat the meat, add the salt, drink the water. Um, but anyway, that's what I've got for you today, guys. No, I promise I'm not going out walking around on my hands, so my fingers are not load-bearing joints. My wrists are not load-bearing joints, but everything seems to be working okay. Um, but that's what I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Have a great day, everyone. Don't forget to get out there. Be 1% better. I will see you tomorrow.